Dr. Jordan Peterson emphasizes the escalating danger of an emerging superstate, describing it as a perilous alliance between powerful corporations driven by self-interest and governments obsessed with security, posing a significant threat to individual freedom and autonomy. Don't miss. How does the Chinese social credit system contribute to the surveillance apparatus described by Dr. Peterson? What parallels does Peterson draw between Western societies and the authoritarian practices in China? What are the implications of the increasing influence of behavioral scientists in shaping societal behavior? I'm not here to talk about January 6th or about any particular threat, insurrection, or protest, political or ideological, real or imaginary. I'm not here to talk about January 6th or about any particular threat, insurrection, or protest, political or ideological, real or imaginary, discourse beyond divisive topics focusing on broader matters that embrace diverse perspectives and contribute to societal harmony. I'm here to talk about the already extant and expanding collusion of government and corporation in restricting the individual freedom and autonomy upon which the productive, generous, and stable psyche, psyche economy and state are themselves necessarily founded. I'm here to talk about the already extant and expanding collusion of government and corporation in restricting the individual freedom and autonomy upon which the productive, generous, and stable psyche, economy, and state themselves necessarily founded. The importance of personal freedom and autonomy as a cherished core value. Speakers highlight concerns about the dangers posed by collaboration between government bodies and businesses, fearing potential abuses that could infringe upon individual liberties. I'll begin my comments, therefore, in the most general terms, to shed light on the mounting problem. I'll begin my comments, therefore, in the most general terms, to shed light on the mounting problem. The importance of effectively communicating with the audience by providing clarity and understanding. It emphasizes the need to engage empathetically with complex issues. There are now 700 million CCTVs in China under the rule of the Communist Party. The system to which those electronic eyes are attached is the most complete state apparatus of surveillance yet imagined, with the ability not only to recognize faces at a distance, but gait itself when facial features are hidden or obscured. Such capability can and will soon be augmented to the point where the movement of eyes themselves, monitored by high resolution and intelligent cameras, will soon be sufficient to identify any aware and active party. The demented, naive, and prideful engineers who so enthusiastically helped build this system call it Skynet. After the rogue and all-seeing technology that took such a dreadfully wrong term, turn in the famous science fiction movie Terminator series, featuring artificially intelligent robot intelligences hell-bent on protecting themselves by destroying humanity. The name also references a well-known Chinese phrase describing the reach of the divine itself. The net of heaven is vast, yet it misses Nothing, which aptly describes the capabilities of the new state apparatus. The system is integrated with the so-called Chinese social credit system, which awards its involuntary participants with a score indicating their compliance with the dictates of the Chinese Communist Party, allowing for full control over access to everything they possess electronically, most ominously their savings and their access to travel, certainly all modern means of travel, but increasingly as the electronic gates come up, even by walking. If you're Chinese or a visitor, your access to the world can be reduced to zero if your social credit score falls beyond an arbitrary minimum. This allows you purposefully to be shut out of all activities that can be virtualized. And in a rapidly virtualizing world, this increasingly means all activities, driving, shopping, working, eating, finding shelter, even fraternizing with friends and family, as merely being in the presence of someone with a low social credit score means that your own score can be lowered. This has also opened up the opportunity for the government to extract slave-like labor from its citizens so burdened 
as the donation of free work to the state still constitute one means by which erring Chinese men and women can increase their score and remain part of human society. This is precisely the payment system most desired by the most tyrannical, not the work for me and benefit thereby that constitutes the contractual arrangement undertaken by free and sovereign citizens, but the work for me and I will lift the deprivation I imposed that has always been the late motif of the slaver. Why is any of this relevant to people in the West? Why is any of this relevant to people in the West? Understanding the viewpoints and concerns of the audience can be complex. We aim to build connections that highlight how they can impact Western society, despite the risk of seeming distant or irrelevant to some. Well, because the technology that the Chinese Communist Party employs is an extension of Western technology. Because we already fell prey to the terrible temptation of lockdown employed by that state in the face of hypothetical crisis once and in the very recent past. We already fell prey to the terrible temptation of lockdown employed by that state in the face of hypothetical crisis once and in the very recent past. During lockdown, I understand and empathize with those who feel their freedom as being restricted. I acknowledge the many difficulties and concerns that arise from these measures. Because we're walking step by step in the same direction, partly because of the hypothetical convenience of universal and automatic recognition of identity. Because we're walking step by step in the same direction, partly because of the hypothetical convenience of universal and automatic recognition of identity. The growing concern about the loss of privacy and personal autonomy due to increasing reliance on surveillance technology. It highlights the potential consequences for individual freedom as surveillance becomes more prevalent. And partly because any problem whatsoever that now confronts us can easily be used to justify the increasing reach of the security and nanny state. It is said that Stone Age people first confronted with cameras and their resultant photographs by modern anthropologists objected to having their images captured as they feared the captivity of their souls. It is said that Stone Age people first confronted with cameras and their resultant photographs by modern anthropologists objected to having their images captured as they feared the captivity of their souls. The growing concerns about privacy breaches and the impacts of advanced technology it stresses the importance of recognizing the fear people have about losing control over their personal identity and the sanctity of their individuality. It turns out that such fear was prescient. The images that we leave behind while navigating virtual space are such close duplicates of our actual selves that the capture of our essence is at this point all but guaranteed. The images that we leave behind while navigating virtual space are such close duplicates of our actual selves that the capture of our essence is at this point all but guaranteed. The complex relationship between the physical and digital worlds, it expresses concern about how authenticity is diminishing and how personal essence is being commercialized. We all now have our doppelgangers. We all now have our doppelgangers. The widespread experiences found in the digital world and how people are vulnerable to surveillance and manipulation. It delves into the complex network of shared encounters in this realm. We all live so much in the virtual world in consequence of our purchasing habits and modes of electronically mediated communication that our very selves have become reducible to a frightening degree to data, the modern equivalent of our footprint, with the same data making up an image of our identity an identity which can be and is increasingly bought and sold by the invisible corporate brokers that still mostly use it to sell us what we so desperately and carelessly and conveniently want, but can also be used to track, monitor, and punish everything we do and say. Behavioral scientists facilitate this process with their reprehensible nudging. The practice of pushing people in a given ideologically determined direction by manipulating invisible incentives behind the scene. Corporations track purchasing decisions, developing algorithms that with increasing accuracy track our patterns of attention and action, allowing for the prediction of what might next be most enticing. Doing so not only to offer us what we want, but to determine and shape what we need. Governments can and are colluding with these corporate agents to develop a picture not only of our actions but of our thoughts and words so that deviation from the desired end can be mapped, rewarded, and punished. 
the development of a digital identity and currency is nothing more than the likely end consequence of such inclinations. And the combination of both can and will facilitate the development of a surveillance state, the scope of which optimistic pessimists of totalitarianism such as George Orwell could scarcely imagine. The new AI systems which are so rapidly emerging do nothing but increase this danger providing for the possibility of a super surveillance whose scope exceeds anything that mere unaugmented humans could imagine, while also making it certain that even the perceptions that in the real world shape our attitudes, conduct, and personality can, manip can be manipulated to the degree that we will not even be able to see a reality outside which that has been constructed by the super state. That we will not even be able to see a reality outside which that has been constructed by the super state. The fear of living in a world controlled by an all-powerful entity where individuals worry about losing their autonomy and being subjected to a false reality. The ultimate fascist collusion between gigantic self-interested corporations and paranoid security-obsessed anti-human governments. We're already selling our souls to the superstate for the purposes of immediate gratification while being enticed to do so by we're already selling our souls to the superstate for the purposes of immediate gratification while being enticed to do so by fear. Understanding the temptation to sacrifice personal freedom and beliefs for convenience and safety, I sympathize with the difficulty of resisting societal pressures while staying true to oneself. With increasing ability to monitor not only the actual attention patterns and behaviors of its citizens, but to predict those that are most likely the persecution of even potential crime becomes ever more likely. If you have nothing to hide, you will have nothing to fear. If you have nothing to hide, you will have nothing to fear. Amid the increasing prevalence of surveillance and government intrusion, there is growing concern about the erosion of personal privacy and the abuse of authority. Will be the slogan commandeered by those most likely to turn to surveillance to protect and control. What was the famous Soviet totalitarian joke attributed to Lavrenti Beria? head of the secret police. Show me the man and I'll show you the crime. Those words were true enough in the time of Stalin's KGB and the police were secret enough then as well. But that's nothing compared to what we can and likely will produce now. A police so secret that we will not even be able to detect their comprehensive and subtle activity. Monitoring crime so pervasive that everyone under the dictates of the system will have something to hide or order, much Mr. to fear. Chairman. The rising collaboration between government and corporations in restricting individual freedom is a pressing concern highlighted by Dr. Jordan Peterson. As technology advances, the potential for mass surveillance and control, as witnessed in China's social credit system, is alarming. The Western world, too, faces the risk of succumbing to similar temptations, jeopardizing personal privacy and paving the way for an overarching superstate. The implications extend beyond immediate convenience, transforming into a potential surveillance state with unprecedented control over citizens' lives. Peterson's cautionary message urges society to reevaluate its trajectory before irreversibly surrendering to the allure of a powerful, all encompassing authority. In championing individual freedom and autonomy, Dr. Jordan Peterson underscores their paramount significance. He voices apprehensions regarding the looming peril of curtailed personal freedom arising from collaborations between colossal corporations and governments. Peterson critiques the burgeoning surveillance state, emphasizing the pivotal role individual identity and authenticity play. Continuous surveillance, he contends, poses a substantial threat to individual autonomy. A thought-provoking perspective emerges, highlighting the notion that the technology wielded by the Chinese Communist Party serves as an outgrowth of Western technological advancements. This prompts contemplation on inadvertent contributions by Western societies to systems that contradict their core values. The ethical dimensions surrounding the evolution of digital identity and currency development also come under scrutiny, particularly in terms of their impact on the authenticity and distinctiveness of personal identity. Dr. Peterson delves into the ethical labyrinth surrounding behavioral science, questioning its role in shaping and manipulating individual behavior. The concept of nudging and the potential collaboration between corporate entities and government bodies are scrutinized as potential infringements on individual agency. 
Through empathy-laden warnings, Peterson foresees the dystopian consequences of unchecked surveillance, echoing concerns about encroachments on personal rights and the ascent of the transnational state. Skepticism arises concerning the argument that citizens with nothing to hide need not fear surveillance, aligning with a broader distrust of power concentration and the latent potential for abuse. Peterson's discourse resonates as a call for vigilance against encroachments on individual liberties and a plea for safeguarding the delicate balance between freedom and societal order. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content, and although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.